This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, a verdict was reached today in the trial of Zachary Borg. Borg's infant daughter suffered an overdose back in July. Investigators who searched the home said they discovered fentanyl in several rooms, including the child's bedroom. He was found guilty of aggravated assault, domestic violence assault, domestic violence reckless conduct, and endangering the welfare of a child. Assistant District Attorney Chelsea Linz says changes in the law are needed to better protect children who are exposed to drugs. Most of the laws that we would be able to prosecute in a case like this are now protected under the new Good Samaritan law, except for the aggravated assault. What we really need is a felony endangering the welfare of a child law, and we need to have the ability to prosecute it. Borg sentencing is scheduled to take place on November 21st. A Waterville man has been indicted for conspiring to provide materials to support terrorists and possessing homemade explosive devices. A federal grand jury charged 19-year-old Xavier Pelkey in a two-count indictment. According to the indictment and court records, between November 2021 and February 2022, Pelkey allegedly conspired with other individuals to conduct a violent attack on a Shia mosque in the Chicago area. The indictment also alleges that on February 11th of this year, Pelkey possessed three homemade explosive devices that were not registered to him. If convicted, Pelkey faces up to 15 years in prison on the material support charge and 10 years in prison for the destructive device charge. Maine Forest Rangers and the Alton Fire Department responded to a forest fire on the Bennock Road in Alton yesterday. No structures were threatened by the fire. It had reportedly been caused by a downed power line. The road remained closed yesterday, though, despite the fire being contained as crews awaited response from the power company. Congressman Jared Golden has declared victory in Maine's 2nd Congressional District with more than 95% of the votes tallied at this point. Golden's camp says they have an 11,000 vote lead, which he says makes a Poliquin win, quote, functionally impossible. Now, at a press conference in Lewiston this morning, Golden said, quote, I am deeply honored the people of Maine's 2nd Congressional District have chosen me to represent them in Washington for another two-year term. Although Bruce Poliquin may not be willing to concede, at this point, the final result is undeniably clear, end quote. The Secretary of State's office will oversee the ranked choice voting tabulation on Tuesday since no candidate has cleared 50 percent of the vote as required by Maine law. Well, there is some great news for the Skowhegan area. The Somerset Mill is getting an upgrade. Sappy North America owns the mill in Skowhegan and has 750 employees. The company announced today it is investing $418 million in their number two paper machine. It will change the type of paper they are producing, increasing its capacity, and make solid bleached sulfate board. They say this product will be a sustainable alternative to plastic packaging. Uh, SAPI had the foresight and the strategic plan uh, to begin uh, diversifying into different grades uh, and the success that we've had the last couple of years in doing that has really built the foundation and the confidence for us to take this next step. Wallace says the changeover won't be complete until 2025, but they plan to start soon with around $70 million invested in 2023 alone. He also says there could be up to 1,000 contractors needed to get this upgrade done. Governor Mills released a statement this morning saying in part that those changes will help make the mill more competitive on the global level. She says by diversifying the forest products made in Maine, the state will strengthen the forest products sector and sustain the good paying jobs it creates. After much anticipation, the city of Augusta has broken ground at the location for its new police department. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. A groundbreaking ceremony took place at 7 Willow Street in Augusta Thursday morning. At the site of the old Hannaford, city officials marked the occasion with shovels and dirt. This moment for a lot of us is something that's been 30 years in the making. The ceremony was a huge success as many citizens Retirees and members of the force heard speeches from Augusta Police Chief Jared Mills and the city's Director of Development Services, Matt Nazar, about the next steps in the project. And it's been a process to get to this point and making sure that we have a facility that's going to be uh, serving the community for the many years to come. Searching for a new location began as early as 2018 when Police Chief Mills needed a location that would best serve the community. 
Well, the biggest thing we wanted to be was centrally located. Uh, we used to be across the street, uh, so it uh, it's it's a fitting spot to be centralized in the city where folks can actually walk to the police station if they need to, and we're easily accessed uh, by the public. The money came from a 2021 vote to allow the city to borrow more than $20 million to acquire the land and build a new state-of-the-art building. When I saw the results of the vote from our community with this overwhelming landslide of support to approve this project, it just warmed my heart. Our, our police officers, our men and women feel very supported by our community. Excavators are here on the scene to start the 65-week project, which is set to start as early as tomorrow with demolition. Reporting from Augusta, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. Now the project is expected to be completed by February of 2024. Well, there is currently a recount going on in Ellsworth at this hour. The recount is in the city council race. There were three seats on the council up for grabs in Tuesday's election. The city clerk's office is currently hand counting votes for John Stein and John Linehan. Michelle Beal and Tammy Moat have had enough votes to take two of those seats. The third seat came down to Stein and Linehan with just 56 votes separating them close enough to take another look. We are following that recount. We'll let you know the outcome as soon as that recount is completed. The cooler weather is finally moving in and local firefighters are concerned about the heating season ahead. They say the high price of fuel could cause people to look for alternative ways to heat their homes and that that could be dangerous if they're not used properly. Craig Colson reports. It was early Halloween morning when flames erupted in neighboring homes in Levant, a terrible fire that claimed the lives of two people trapped inside, leaving others injured. Fire officials have since determined there weren't any working smoke detectors in the homes. Levant Fire Chief Eric Strout says that can often make a difference when fire breaks out. So test it, make sure the batteries work. We recommend that, you know, every 10 years, replace that detector. Um, but take the steps to make sure what does a smoke detector sound like, not when it's chirping, the battery's going bad, but when it's actually going off. Because some people never heard a smoke detector go off. And if you don't have any working smoke detectors, local fire departments and the Red Cross will often provide them. Chief Stroud is also concerned about the use of alternative heating sources like kerosene and space heaters. More people are expected to use them this year as they struggle with the high price of heating oil and other fuels. He says they should be kept away from items that can catch fire, and we should also check our heating sources to make sure they're working properly. So we remind people if you're using a wood stove for the first time, check it out, have your mm -hmm. chimney inspected. Chief Stroud says it's also important to keep entrances free of snow this winter. And we should also talk about a fire evacuation plan with people in our homes should a fire ever break out. Have a meeting place, right? When you get out of your house, Get a plan that where you're going to meet so when the fire department gets there, we can account for who's out of the house. And then we have an idea of how many people are left in the house or who we're actually searching for. This is Craig Colson reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. Alrighty, well, we had a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. it, you know, may have been a little cooler, but it was still completely comfortable, beautifully sunny. Yeah. You just couldn't have picked a better day to be outside. But those lower temperatures are creeping in, so Craig's yeah. absolutely right. We need to be on the lookout for safety. Yeah, and even though it was really nice during the day, we're really seeing those temperatures plummet overnight. Mm. Uh, so a lot of people still waking up to cold homes, yeah. and so heating starting to be a factor now as Definitely well. Definitely coming into play. Well, with a little bit more on what we can expect for this coming overnight, let's take a first look at our forecast. Thank you so much, Beth and Peter. Happy Thursday. Our first weather today is brought to you by Saliba's Rug Cleaners, Maine's largest rug cleaning destination for over 70 years. Speaking of 70s, no 70s today here in Bangor, but look just south of us, southern part of the state, even a couple of low 70s today. So another really nice and warm day outside. Highs in Bangor, we're hovering in those mid 60s today, a couple of mid 50s by the coast with a little bit of a breeze made it feel a lot colder. But look at all this warm air in the northeast and in the Midwest. But look what's just to the west. Those blue colors, those are very cold winter like temperatures as a cold front will continue to cross the country and will be in on that cold weather as well in the next couple of days. We do have some windy conditions right now, a 15 mile an hour wind speed here in Bangor blowing from the south for the most part. So that is bringing all those warm temperatures 
all the way from the south. And because of the wind, we do have some small craft advisories in effect until the morning hours on Friday and some gale warnings until 5 p.m. on Saturday. So if you're out and about on the waters, take extra precautions if you're enjoying all of the warm, warm weather. Tonight, though, temperatures will continue to drop still well above average and hovering in those mid to upper 40s. Beth and Peter? So that's actually kind of a warmer overnight. Yeah, especially for this time of year. We'll take that. We will indeed. All right. Well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6 today, Hudson University in Bangor honors veterans for their service and sacrifice. And how area towns are honoring their local veterans with special banners. We'll have those stories and much more after this. An official message from Medicare. Often things look the same. Exactly the same. Until you take a closer look. At Medicare.gov, you can easily compare Medicare plans and see the real difference. Find a plan that offers you more or saves money. Wouldn't that be nice? Plans change every year. Soak in your health. Open enrollment ends December 7th. Compare now at Medicare.gov. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Wings, Wings, Wings is hiring, hiring, hiring. Come work at Wings, Wings, Wings. Wings is number one. Wings does case management. Bring hope to families by working at Wings, Wings, Wings. I work at Wings. I work at Wings. Come work at Wings. Wings, 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 ranked one of the best places to work in Maine for the last five years in a row. I'm Phil Levesque, president of Levesque Business Solutions. We're a family-owned main business since 1963. We're your one-stop shop for great office products at affordable rates. From copiers to office furniture to PPE, we've got it all warehoused right here in Bangor. We're your local small main business with a dedicated staff providing honest and friendly customer service, top-of-the-line tech support, and the option of in-house leasing. Let us help you get back to business. I'm Jay Pearl from Carroll Harper & Associates, Maine's most experienced Medicare Health Plans agency. Every day we hear how complicated navigating the Medicare maze can be. Let us help. From enrolling in Medicare to finding the right Medicare Health Plan, we are your go-to agency. We represent Martins Point Generations Advantage and other Medicare Health Plans that meet our quality standards. There's no cost or obligation for our services, so call Carroll Harper & Associates today. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everybody. Hudson University in Bangor honor veterans for their service and sacrifice today. The presentation yes. included remarks from several speakers, including an active duty Army soldier who just came back after a three year stint overseas in South Korea and a professor of military science at the University of Maine. This is an awesome event. Um, it, you know, their, the recognition of this, uh, of our service and, and the community and the veterans here uh, is just amazing by the university here. Um, I'm proud to be a part Part of it. Uh, I'm proud to be a part of today. Well, the event included a minute of silence and a national roll call to honor those who have served, those who are serving now, and those who gave their lives in service to our country. The towns of Benton, Fairfield, and Clinton have put up banners honoring local veterans as well. The Fairfield VFW Post met with local historian Buddy Frost and decided the banners were a great way to honor those who served. Locals hope that the banners remind future generations of the service and sacrifice of those before them. I know a lot of people who come through here and see these banners and they see uh, like the ones behind, in front of me here, are Fred Albert and uh, um, Dick Goodwin, they knew them, they grew up with them, they were storekeepers here in town, but until they saw the banners, 
they never realized that they were ever in the military because it wasn't talked about then. So bringing these people to life and their history and everything and, and documenting it for future generations is important to us. Yeah. About 90 banners have been put up, but there are even more yet to be hung. Some great ways to honor those local veterans. Yeah. Those banners are just beautiful, sort of mm -hmm. those vintage looking photos, you know, yeah. showing the folks in your community and how they once were and what they did. It's just a gorgeous tribute. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, local business Box of Maine found another new way to help veterans. We'll tell you more about that. And in sports, Orono football is playing for a championship for the first time in 30 years. Find out what makes this team different from that 1994 team. That story right after the break. At Home Kitchen Bath and Flooring in Dover Foxcroft are proud members of the Flooring Network here in Maine. We have our flooring installers on staff ready for you and your custom flooring project. With over 50 years of combined experience, we'll work with you from start to finish, including demo and cleanup. Backed by the Flooring Network's state-of-the-art warehouses, we have a massive inventory to provide you with the best value and fit any flooring budget you may have. So stop in, meet our flooring experts, and see what we can do to make you feel at home. Al, did you make that call? Honey, we already have Medicare. Why do I need to call? Alan, the Feldman said we may be able to get additional benefits with a Medicare Advantage plan right here in our zip code with zero dollar monthly premiums. Honey, what do you mean additional benefits? We turned 65, we got Medicare. That's all there is to it, right? I'm talking about Medicare Part C, commonly called Medicare Advantage. We have traditional Medicare, which is only Medicare Parts A and B, but not Part C. Wait. So not everyone on Medicare is a Part C plan? No, that's why we need to call because there may be plans available with additional benefits that aren't covered under Medicare Parts A and B. We don't have a Medicare Part C plan which covers everything in Part A and Part B plus extra benefits in Medicare Part C. What kind of extra benefits? There are great plans that may be available with extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Did you say dental? Yes, dental. Medicare Part C plans could include dental benefits that help cover routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, plus dental x-rays, fillings, gum disease treatment, and dentures. We need that. I'm calling. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans with additional benefits available that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. You don't get a plan with additional benefits automatically. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. Call now for your free 2022 no obligation Medicare benefits review. Call 800 413 8094. 800 413 8094. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. The eight-man football state championships are this Saturday down in Augusta. And for the first time in almost 30 years, Orono football has the chance to bring home a gold ball. Now, there aren't many similarities between this year's team and that 1994 squad, but there is one, the Parker family. Ryan Sudall has that story. For the first time since 1994, the Orono Red Riots are playing for a football state title. And they're ready. It's to be a part of the comeback in football in Orno. We have the whole community behind us again. It's been really awesome. Some might say that lineman Noah Parker was born ready. Brady, yeah, go with that. His dad, line coach John Parker, was a lineman on that 94 team. It's hard to say. It's, obviously, it means a lot to me to see him play in the same position I do. Um, I think he plays a lot better than I do. It's fun to watch him. It's awesome. The fact that I can play the same position as him too and he's here to help us and I can ask him any question I have and he'll always have an answer. That's the best part of it. And despite all his successes on the field, John says his son's best qualities are the ones off the field. He cares a lot about everybody around him, probably more about the people around him than he does himself, but he wants the team to succeed. That, that means a lot. 
and other players' similar outlooks can be thanked because of bonds like the Parkers. But we have lots of those connections on our team. Uh, Brady Grant, his dad is one of our assistant coaches. Preston Mayhew's got two boys who play. Jack Brewer, of course, and his dad. We've got lots of father and son connections um, that, that are really meaningful to Orono football. And the team hopes these connections will mean a state title. The Red Riots will play the South 4 seed Old Orchard for the eight-man small title this Saturday at 2.30 at Coney High School. In Hamden, I'm Ryan Sudol, Fox 22, ABC 7. Thanks for that, Ryan. Uh, good stuff as always. Looking forward to those games down at Augusta this weekend. Let's do some basketball now. College hoops started up this week, and so did the Chris Markwood era for Maine men's basketball. Markwood, a South Portland native and former Black Bear, kicked off his career as Maine's head coach in Nebraska on Monday. The Black Bears entered that game as heavy underdogs, and they started slow, falling behind by double figures early. But they caught fire in the second, bringing the game to within one against the Big Ten opponent. They also shot over 40% from three for the game. That's impressive. And even with the loss, Markwood said he loved the way his team fought back. Resolve to fight back into it. You know, obviously we had a frustrating start to the game, which is, you know, it can be normal. We got a brand new group and you're going into a big stage. But but again, a lot of positives to take away. You know, we're still growing. Uh, you know, hopefully down the road here we'll be in a position where we can win those type of games. All right, now the Black Bears return to action at home on Friday for Mark Wood's first game back in the cross center. Since his assistant coaching days with the University of Vermont, Black Bears play UMaine Fort Kent. That game starts at 7 p.m. at the cross. A good chance for Maine to pick up their first win of the Markwood era. He says this whole experience has really been surreal, and he can't wait to get out there in front of those home fans. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of nerves going out there tomorrow night just because of it's, it is my first time back coaching on the main sideline. And, um, you know, excited to, to put forth a product for our, for our fans that they're going to be proud of here moving forward. All right, we'll see if Maine can bring their record up to 1-1. One and one. That is Friday night. That's all the time we have for sports. Here is Conrad Sapinski with your full five-day forecast. Conrad. Thank you so much, Tyler. Our main weather today is brought to you by Leona Mays Antique and Gift Shop in Newport. Come check out our three floors of antique treasures and gifts in our renovated 1800s home. All right, so looking real nice outside today. Just a few passing clouds. We did have a couple of uh, scattered showers in the northern part of the state. But take a look just to the west. In Canada, that blue is some snow showers in the region. No snow for us as temperatures are still well above average. But we will not be in the clear for long. More chances of showers will be arriving in the evening hours on Friday and then really picking up in intensity overnight on Friday and then into the morning hours on Saturday before finally moving out by the early afternoon hours on Saturday. It's going to be a pretty big rainmaker as well. We're looking at around an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall here in the city of Bangor. Same thing by the coast. Even north of us will have uh, rainfall totals close to two inches. So bring out those umbrellas, folks, and get ready. It will be wet outside. But not only that, our dew points will be on the higher end as well, Friday into Saturday. So expect it to feel a little bit more sticky, muggy outside. So not the nicest day to be outside for Friday into Saturday. But hey, on the bright side, though, temperatures were nice and warm. Some well above average temperatures once again. I feel like this is on repeat as the 60s are back in the forecast. We had highs around 63 in Bangor, some mid 50s by the coast. So it felt nice and toasty outside just ahead of this cold front right over here. Close to Minneapolis right now, north part of Wisconsin, still in the 50s and 60s, but then just to the west, temperatures are in the 30s. So get ready, everyone will start to cool off all across the country in the next couple of days. Our high is supposed to be closer to 48 degrees, so enjoy these next couple of days, close to 70 degrees on Saturday. Then that cold front comes in, and you know what happens. We really cool off. Same thing on Monday, and then we continue to stick around with those below average temperatures for next week. I know we've been pretty much spoiled with these warm 60s, but now is that time to prepare, get those jackets, those hats ready, because colder weather is on the way. Tonight, though, mild 
temperatures once again. Mid 40s under a partly cloudy sky. Tomorrow, warm temperatures. Oh yes, we'll take those low 60s under a mostly cloudy sky. Barely any winds as well, so it will feel nice and comfortable outside. But our extended forecast outlook does show more rain coming in. Really heavy rain Friday night into Saturday. Then we clear up first part of the day on Sunday. More scattered chances in the afternoon hours. Monday and Tuesday, we're in the clear. But temperatures will be in those low to mid 40s. Beth and Peter. All right, so some chilly overnights coming our way for sure. Absolutely, and yep. uh, a rainy Saturday to look forward to if, if uh, you're into that sort of thing. I know a lot of people love a rainy day. So. Well, it's a perfect excuse to either get something done or get nothing done exactly. and just watch TV. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, well, there's more to come after the break, so stay with us. Do you have leaky pipes? Are you planning a plumbing job? Is your heating system working right? Are you designing a plumbing project? Then contact Harley's Plumbing and Heating Plus. If your toilet will not flush, Harley will be there in a rush. Furnace bit the dust today, Harley crew is on the way. Harley plumbing, Harley heating, 990-2200. Call now. Harley! Call or visit online. However you spend your day, spend it in style. At Label Shopper, you'll find designer brands for 30 to 70% less than department stores. With prices this low, you can grab all your favorite styles. Label Shopper, great clothes, great prices. You've probably seen those ads on TV with the out-of-state 800 number that look like information from Medicare. Some even suggest that your zip code will get you more benefits or even money back. You guessed it, those ads are misleading. So don't call that out-of-state 800 number when your help is right here at home. Do what I did and call the Senior Planning Center. They have trusted professionals all over Maine. Call the Senior Planning Center at 223-6565. That's 223-6565. We have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to celebrate. This holiday season, let's do more than see the people we love. Let's be with the people we love and make the holiday memories that we will cherish for a lifetime. Let's begin at Bangor International Airport, the official airport of making tomorrow's holiday memories today. FlyBangor.com. Tonight, the path of the storm tracking the cold. Plus, as votes are counted, the wait to see who will take control. For election results and more, Americans turn to the number one newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. This week on Rio, we're celebrating veterans. Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, Army. Served 30 years with tanks. Did you say tanks or thanks? <laughs> America's game. Grab those devices. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're good at following orders. Salutes America's heroes. Yeah! Marines, huh? Now, I'm not as lean or as mean as I used to be. Well, neither am I. <laughs> Reels honoring veterans all week. <laughs> Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. Fox of Maine has found a yummy way to help veterans. The company packages Maine-made foods and items into variety boxes that offer tastes of what Maine is famous for to those who receive them. Now they have created a way to sponsor a Maine soldier. They are hoping to send hundreds of the boxes to those away from home serving their country. Uh, some people would love to bless a soldier from Maine with a box, and there's other people that just financially they just can't afford, this, afford to send a box. And so I wanted to connect those two together so that we can get a piece of home to our soldiers that are serving away this holiday season. This month, they are also teaming up with the Maine Veterans Project to raise money for their heating fuel program. Box of Maine has had 600 cedar dog tags made from locally sourced cedar trees in down east Maine. They are for sale, and 100% of the proceeds will go to the fund to help veterans in need. Now, to order or find out more, you can go to their website, boxofmaine.com. And for the last year, we've been going around the state talking with Mainers who served in World War II and collecting their stories. On Friday night, we'll be airing the fourth segment of Our Heroes, Their Own Words. It features eight Mainers, both men and women, telling their stories and experiences. I was just a small town girl and there wasn't much around here. 
you know, to do or anything. And my brothers were Coast Guardmen, so they paved the way for me. And I thought, well, if they were that young and joined that for President Roosevelt, I think probably I could do as good as they had. The one hour special airs this Friday, Veterans Day at 8 p.m. on ABC7. Certainly lots of intriguing stories uh, there, and, and we can't wait to hear them. Cannot wait to hear them. That one alone, just, I can't, I can't mm. wait. I can't wait to hear more from that woman. Absolutely. All righty. Well, that is going to do it for us, folks, from everyone here at ABC7 News. Take care and have a great rest of your night. Good night, everyone.